Hello and welcome to another edition of Middleware Friday for June 15th, 2017. This is episode 24. And today I'm going to be talking to you about a new feature just released this past week called Azure Event Hubs Auto Inflate. So once again, strap for time this week, I was in Seattle at the Data Insight Summit, which was really cool. There was a lot of interesting things being released specifically around Power BI. Highly recommend you check out those videos. I'll just do a Bing or Google search for Microsoft Data Insights and you'll be able to stream that content. So for today, we're just focusing on Azure Event Hubs and a feature called Auto Inflate. Now, one of the things that I really like about cloud is the ability to avoid building for peak. So much like if you are a power company or more specifically a transmission company, you need to be able to build your infrastructure to accommodate the maximum amount of throughput that all of your customers or consumers can demand of your particular network. Now, obviously this adds costs because essentially you're building an infrastructure that may never get fully utilized, but because power is so important, you certainly want to be able to deal with that capacity if required. Now, one of the things I do like about cloud computing is the ability to do things like auto scale, where you're able to provision just enough infrastructure in order to satisfy demand. And in the event that demand increases, you have some ability to intelligently scale your services. Now, for the purpose of this talk, we're going to talk about how this relates to Azure Event Hubs. Now, here is a brief overview of the Azure Event Hubs architecture. Um, I've pulled this directly from the documentation on Microsoft.com. And for those that may not be overly familiar, I figure it was worth to go through this it's in some detail. So what we do have here is we've got event producers who are able to publish messages to an Azure Event Hub using HTTP and AMQP. Now, one of the things that Azure Event Hubs is good at is the ability to deal with high rates of ingestion and the ability to stream this information through the service onto consumers. Now, one of the ways that Microsoft is able to, is able to achieve this type of scale is through the use of partitions. And also by using consumer groups, we have the ability of doing some pub sub type semantics. Now, Azure Event Hubs are different than Azure Queues and Topics, which can use a more of a traditional pub sub pattern. But the idea is once a message has been retrieved from let's say a queue, that message is essentially gone. What's different about Event Hubs is Event Hubs will store those messages for a specific duration. Uh, can be you know from one day to seven days typically. Now what that pattern allows you to do is to have multiple readers. Because the message is, isn't removed until its retention period has been expired, consumer groups are able to use a cursor and essentially keep their own track of the messages that they've received or consumed. And this allows them to consume messages independently of each other. Now, import, another important concept of Azure Event Hub's architecture is throughput units. So once again, from the documentation, the throughput capacity of an Event Hub is controlled by throughput units. Throughput units are pre-purchased units of capacity. A single throughput unit includes the following capacity. The ability to ingress or ingest up to one megabyte per second or a thousand events per second whichever comes first, that's an important distinction. So certainly if you had more smaller events, you could process those than the same amount of larger events. So there is sort of that um, trade-off from that perspective. And also the ability to egress or output up to two megabytes per second. Now by default or through the Azure portal, a customer can provision up to 20 throughput units uh, per namespace. And these are shared across all of the event hubs within the namespace. Now, there is another sort of caveat here. If you do require more than 20 throughput units, you are able to talk to Microsoft to get that exceeded. Now, part of the challenges with this architecture, it is there is an element of building for peak. 
Now, in the event that you hit one of these upper thresholds, you can end up in a situation like this, where you do have some level of backup occurring, and it's the result of a server busy exception. So now certainly one thing you can do is you can over provision and you can actually create more throughput units than you typically need. The problem with that though is you are now paying or essentially building for peak. Now, what I do find is the event hub prices are rather reasonable, but certainly a person doesn't want to spend more money if they don't have to. And as you can see, the server busy exception, one of the symptoms is that the event hub does not have the sufficient amount of throughput units. And as a result, there's basically an exception being thrown and the publisher would then have to, you know, retry publishing at a later moment. Now, typically with these types of high ingestion solutions such as industrial IoT or big data, you certainly don't want to have a whole lot of retries or pass the complexity down to your publisher because what you could end up having is missing data, which could alter the accuracy of your downstream analytic process. So I guess what is the solution? And as you can probably guess by the title of this particular episode, it's a new feature called Autoinflate. And the idea with Autoinflate is the ability to provide additional capacity, but to be able to do that on demand. So now, in order to enable Autoinflate, you actually need to go ahead and create a new event hub. At least when I looked, I didn't see the ability to add this to an existing event hub. And the whole idea with Autoinflate is it provides an efficient scaling mechanism to smarts to start small and to scale up as you grow. So this is very much in line with other cloud models where now we've got this dynamic capacity, which is fantastic. I can essentially pay for what I need. Now, from what I understand is there's no ab ability to scale down. Um, I suspect that could be the result of potential message loss, but certainly this does allow you to grow um, as required. And I'd be willing to bet that if you need to scale out at some point, there's a high probability that you'll be back at that same point from a message throughput per perspective, um, even if it does take some additional time. So that concludes this particular episode for Azure Event Hub's Auto Inflate. I hope you'd enjoy this. Um, now, certainly in this case, I didn't have a, a demo in part because it would take a little bit of work to actually create enough publishers to exceed one throughput unit of a thousand events per second. Uh, so you'll just have to take my word on that. Uh, once again, I'd like to thank BizTalk360 for being an important partner of the show. Uh, take care and we'll see you again next week.